Okay. So this was basically the first question I sent as homework. It says, in the diagram, A, B, C, and D lie on the circle with center O. C, O is parallel to D, A. Okay. We can see that because of these arrows. This is obvious. The tangents to the circle at A and C meet at T. Okay. This was also a property that A, T and C, T are basically two tangents and they're meeting at the same point. So I told you guys that the length of this side and this side would be same. This was basically a property, right? A, O, C is 136 centimeter, uh, 136 degrees. That is uh, given. You need to find X. Okay. Acha. So let's just zoom in. Now we are good enough, mature enough to directly analyze the situation without erasing anything. What we can see is, again, first property is being used. What was the first property? Angle at center is half the angle at circumference. Okay. So this is my center and this is my circumference. So this entire angle is 136 degrees. This is 136 degrees. What would be X? Angle at center is twice the angle at circumference or angle at circumference is half the angle at center. Whatever way you want to uh, talk about it, okay? Acha, I got one answer. I think all of you can respond to this. 136 divided by 2 is going to give you 68 degrees. Very good. So X is basically 68 degrees, okay? X is going to be 68 degrees. And those who are uh, messaging me on the other account, please don't message me on the other account. Just message me on the account to which I'm speaking, okay? Just follow the mic and then send me the message. Okay. Acha. X was the first part. We were able to find out the value of X. How? I'll tell you one last time. Angle at center is twice the angle at circumference. So O is center, B is circumference. This is how I knew that I would be dividing 136 by 2 and this would give me 68. Okay, please pay attention. So this turned out to be 68 degrees. Okay, find Y. Acha. where is Y? Okay, this is Y. Okay, now it could be that some of you are thinking in another direction. I would be telling you some other way that's equally fine, right? Because the best thing about geometry is that this way or the other using the first property or the second property, your answer should be same, okay? So I can see DA and CO are two parallel lines, okay? So this is the first line and then we have another line. And both the lines are parallel. This is why I know the two lines are parallel because of these arrows and also because they have clearly mentioned that the lines are parallel, okay? Acha. When I'm cutting the two lines by transversal, I've told you guys earlier as well, very good, Taha. This is the blue angle. This is the pink angle. So sum of interior angles in case of two parallel lines is what? We know this rule. What is the sum? Very good. Okay. So pink plus blue is going to be, if this is A, if this is B, A plus B is basically going to be 180. Very good. So I know that the two lines are perpendicular. 136 plus Y degrees is basically going to give me 180. Okay. So at this point, what I can say is 136 plus Y is basically equal to 180. So Y is equal to 180 minus 136 and this is going to be 44 very good so the answer was 44 for y well done Bipesh. okay those who have any queries any questions can ask me directly Achha. we are done with the first two X was basically found by using the property that angle at center is twice the angle at circumference and Y is basically coming from the fact that when you have two parallel lines which are being cut by a transversal, OA is your transversal, the sum of interior angles is basically 180, okay? So we are done with the first two parts. This turned out to be 44. Find Z, okay. Now if I, I'll just give you one hint. And then you need to think about it on your own. Whatever we did for the first part, 
वुड बी यूज फॉर दर्ड पार्ट राइट इस तरीके से हमने एक्स फाइंड किया था सिमिलर प्रॉपर्टी वुड बी यूज इन ऑर्डर टू फाइंड जेड टेक वन मिनट एंड मैसेज मी योर आंसर क्विकली वेरी गुड था आई गॉट योर आंसर That is certainly correct. Well done. Very good. Yes, Bipesh. Very good. Excellent. Your logic is also correct, and your idea is also correct. And that is a different logic, right? So, guys, you can also think about cyclic quadrilaterals. Okay, we know what exactly a cyclic quadrilateral is. You need to find this Z. Okay, all right. So I got a few answers. Very good. The answers are correct. We have been asked to find Z. Now we have two properties. Okay, the first property is that Pepeish has used. Um, we know what exactly a cyclic quadrilateral is. So a quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. It becomes cyclic when all the four vertices are basically touching your circumference. So you can see that A, B, C, D, the four vertices are touching the circle. So X is opposite to Z, and the property was that the sum of two opposite angles in case of a cyclic quadrilateral is Again, one eighty. Okay, so you're not supposed to write down these names because all these questions are just are for one mark only. Yes, if the examiner says, uh, give reasons for your answer, then you're supposed to explain as well. Okay, I'm just writing all of this for your convenience. So it is a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, and what is the property? Z. Plus x is basically going to be one eighty. Why? Because sum of opposite sides in case of a cyclic quadrilateral is one eighty. This chapter is basically geometry, Umaiza. This is geometry. No, 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 no. This is not congruence or similarity. We'll talk about that later on. Okay. This is just angles and geometry. That is it. Angles and geometry. And you are lost because obviously you were not able to attend the previous classes because of some genuine issue. That is fine. Don't worry. Everything is recorded. We are just using some properties that we have discussed, and now we are implementing those properties in past paper questions. Okay. These are properties. So just don't worry. Once you will get to uh, look at those properties, you would be able to understand everything. Okay. Acha. So this is one eighty. So Z is going to be what? One eighty minus one sixty eight. As uh, one eighty minus sixty no. eight. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, Thank 68. you. Sixty eight. So that is going to be. One hundred and twelve degrees. Very good. Okay, excellent. So this was Bipesh and some other students. This is how they did this question. When I did this question, I basically thought that if I find this angle, that I certainly can because sum of angles in case of a circle is three sixty. So what would be this pink angle? Three sixty minus one thirty six. It would be two hundred and twenty four. I can use the same idea. That angle at center, angle at center, is twice the angle at circumference. Okay, the same idea. So if this is two twenty four, I can just do two twenty four divide by two, and that would give me one hundred and twelve. So this way or the other, I was getting the same answer. Right? This is the best thing about geometry. Ma'am. Yes. Uh, what's this property called? Which property? This one. Uh, the one that you just did. Yeah. Uh, where yes, basically we have angle at center and angle at circumference. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, there's no specific name for all these properties, right? Yes. When we were talking about angles, we had alternate angles, corresponding angles, and even for some. Uh, circle properties we do have names, but only for some uh, for some properties, right? For this, if you have been asked to write down the reason, you will just write it down this way. Since 
angle at center is twice the angle at circumference. That is why Z is 224 divided by 2. But you would get to see automatically that the examiner would not be asking for reasons whenever you will be using these properties, right? Because some students would be considering the cyclic quadrilateral thing. Some students would be considering this. So these questions would be for one mark or two mark. And you are only supposed to use those properties and then just write it down, right? You're not supposed to... Um, name the uh, properties and all of that but yes obviously if you have time if you're good at time management then in that case you can write these statements but there's no need to write statements okay so in short there's no specific name you if you want to write down something you can just write this explanation down okay yes ma'am okay all right Acha. Let's talk about, okay, Z turned out to be one, uh, one, two degrees. Find T. T is the third part. Okay. Now I've already helped you guys a lot. Take one minute and quickly just find T. Quickly find T, okay? Similar property is used and your hint is over here. Your hint is that A, T and T, C are basically two tangents and then just do it quickly. Very good, Taha. Excellent. Your answer is correct. Well done. Very good, Bipesh. That's also correct. Okay. I'm just writing this for you, for you guys because this was a property. Always remember the angle between tangent and radius is 90 degrees. Okay. This is something that we have already discussed. Now, OA is your radius and AT is your tangent. So, the angle is 90 degrees. Similarly, OC is your radius and CT is your tangent. So, the angle is 90 degrees. And if you look at AOCT, it's a kite-shaped thing. But what exactly it is? It is a four-sided figure. Can you guys find the sum of interior angles for a four-sided figure? You already knew that in the last uh, class. Yes. Yes, it's 360, okay? What was the formula? Sum of interior angles was basically N minus 2 multiplied by 180. What was N? N was the number of sides. So if it's a kite, if it's a four-sided figure, it would be 4 minus 2, that would be 2 multiplied by 180. And this is going to be 360 degrees. So even if it's a square, if it's a rectangle, if it's a parallelogram, even if it's uh, a kite, all these are four-sided figures. Okay. So some of interior angles is going to be 360 degrees. Do we have three angles? Yes, we do have three angles. This is 90. This is 90. And this is 136. We, you need to find T. What do we know? 90 plus 90 plus 136 plus T is going to be 360 degrees. When you will make T the subject, you are going to get 44 for that. Hassan, Sahal, very good. Your answer is correct. Very good, Bipesh, uh, Moise and Taha. Excellent. Okay. Kabir, Urva and yes, I think this, these my names are enough. Uh, did you guys understand something? Umayza, I don't expect that you would be able to understand a lot at this point to just stay calm. I can understand because you did not um, watch the recordings or you did not get the recordings. So because of that, you are not able to understand that these are properties that we have already discussed. Okay, so just relax. Just give me two more minutes and then once we talk about the new topic, you would be able to understand things. Yes, students, please tell me quickly any questions from this. No questions. All of you, Pipesh, Hassan, Kabir, Noor. Noor, are you okay with this? Yes, miss. Okay. All right. So I hope that we are fine with this. So this is done. 44 degrees. This was the first homework question. You guys can certainly do the second question. And now let's talk about the next thing that is in geometry. It is basically congruence and similarity okay now congruence and similarity are two things which look very much same but they are not that same okay let's read the definition congruence 
two shapes are said to be congruent if they are the same shape and size. Okay? If you have two shapes which are being said that they are congruent, that is only possible when they are exactly the same. When I say exactly the same, same size and same um, shape. Okay, So the shape has to be same and the dimensions have to be same. Okay, Achha. Forget about everything. Just read it from here. The two triangles shown here are congruent. Now, the two triangles are placed in different ways, right? Like the first triangle has three over here and the second triangle has three centimeters over here. That is fine. The placement of two shapes is fine. That can be other way around. But the important part is that their basic shape has to be same and their dimensions must be same. So then I would be able to say that the two figures are congruent, okay? So this is one condition for congruency. The two shapes must have same dimensions and same shape. Then you would say the two shapes are congruent. For example, if I quickly make this triangle over here so this is first triangle and then this is another triangle now although i made the two triangles in a different way but if i say please keep your mics muted keep your mics muted Ariba, your mic is on mute yes thank you okay if i say that this is one centimeters let's do it this way this is x y and z and this is Z and then this is, let's say, X and Y, for example. So what is happening here? Now, the two triangles are other way around, but they are congruent. Why? Because their basic shape is same and their dimensions are same. Okay, so the three dimensions are same and the shape is same. That is why this is basically uh, said to be two same triangles or two congruent. Congruent is the word. Okay. Umaiza, please uh, pay attention at this point. Just listen to me carefully. Everything would be clear. Okay. This is the first time we have started the discussion about it. Okay. Achha. Now it says uh, shapes which are of different sizes but have the same shape are basically called similar. Okay. So this is what you need to understand. It could be that this is a triangle. And then I make another triangle that looks like this one. I will make another triangle at this point. And the two triangles would look same. But they are not congruent. And why are the two triangles not congruent? Because the dimensions are not same. Okay. They, have, they don't have the same length. Yes, they don't have the same length. Their lengths are different, but they are similar okay? because the two shapes are same. But this is just how we can talk about this stuff in English, right? We need to have some mathematical logic, some mathematical proof, some conditions that we can use in order to explain this to the examiner. If you have been asked to prove that the two triangles are similar, the red and blue, you cannot say, yes, they look same and the lengths are different. No, this way you would not get any mark. You need to use some rules, some conditions, some tests. And once those tests would be passed, only then you can say that the two figures are similar or the two figures are congruent. So please pay attention. This is the first time. Stay calm. Stop uh, finding it, you know, stop exaggerating and telling me hey, this is very difficult and stuff like that. Just stay calm and listen to me first and then, uh, you know, uh, make conclusions about it. Okay. Let's talk about this. Okay. Now I've just told you that we have... The first thing that is congruency, okay? The two figures can be placed other way around. It's not necessary that their position or all of that is exactly the same. And you have been asked to tell if the two figures are congruent or not. Now, you guys would not say that, yes, I measured it by my scale and the lens turned out to be same. No. The examiner is going to give you some lens, some angles. And if these four, like if one of these four tests is passed, then the two figures are going to be congruent, okay? Let's talk about the first test. The first test says, 
साइड 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 ओके इफ ऑल थ्री साइड ऑफ वन ट्राइंगल आर द सेम एज देंस of the sides of the second triangle then the two triangles are congruent just remember side 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 this is the first test which is going to tell you if the two triangles are congruent or not so if you have two triangles and if both the triangles have same sides you can say that yes the two triangles are congruent we have four tests here if one out of these four tests is passed you can say that the two triangles are congruent okay let's talk about the second test it says mom uh, yes uh, and for mm -hmm. the first test you said that the sides have to be the same mm -hmm. um so it means that even if um uh, like mhm mm the three sides all, must uh, be same yes ma'am so all three sides in one triangle are different lengths but उटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरेंटरे
ओके अच्छा लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दर्ड टेस्ट ओके द थर्ड टेस्ट इज एंगल एंगल साइड नाउ यू गाइज वुड बी इन दोजिशन टू एक्सप्लेन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट टू मी एज वेल एंगल एंगल साइड ओके एंगल एंगल एंड देन साइड this is basically the property so you need to have two angles which are same in the other triangle as well and then the side that is coming between that um what do you say uh, between those two angles okay so angle angle side first angle then the angle that is coming after this one the two angles must be same for example this is same as this and then the two sides must be same this side must be same as this one this is basically the property yes any confusions with angle angle side no ma'am no ma'am uh, ma'am if, yes. if we say if we refer uh, to, to the rule as angle side angle it will be easier to remember because uh, yes we, i agree because when s is in exactly. the middle exactly uh, exactly I get your you point. You could remember the structure mm. of how. Uh, you are certainly right. Yes, yes, I get your point. Okay, so he is very right. Uh, even I used the same idea. He is basically saying that angle angle sides is making things a bit complicated. You can remember this this way: angle side angle. So one angle, then side, and then the other angle. Right. So. you can write it as aas because if the because we will practice questions and you will see that the once the examiner asks you would obviously need to you know tell that which test exactly you have used but you can write it as um, double aas but for your reference you can use this one okay this would make more sense i i agree angle side angle so two angles are same then the side is same and then the next angle is same okay test 4 now test 4 is only for right angle triangles okay you guys know that in right angle triangles we have 90 degrees angle so this is a right angle triangle if you have two right angle triangles test 4 is applicable on that and what exactly is test 4 saying right angle and hypotenuse side if both the triangles contain a right angle have hypotenuse of the same length and one other side of the same length then they are congruent okay now what is happening here basically it's just this that you have two right angle triangle so both the triangles have right angle Hi what is hypotenuse hypotenuse is basically the, the side length. The, yes you can say it's the biggest the, it's the biggest length in case of a right angle triangle or it is the side that is opposite to the right angle that is 90 degrees okay so this is the side that is opposite to right angle or this is the side that is opposite to right angle and this side is basically called hypotenuse side okay so right angle hypotenuse and side right angle right angle is same hypotenuse side is same and then if you have any other side that is same this would make sense if you guys know pythagoras theorem you would be able to understand that why exactly uh, this is true right so what is the fourth test and the last test both the triangles have right tri have right angle the side opposite to right angle is basically hypotenuse and the side is basically it could be this side it could be this side this does not matter okay yes we are done with the uh, with the four tests now tell me if you had any difficulties with the understanding of the four tests no difficulties no ma'am okay all right Uh, only four tests for congruence. We only have four tests, and then there's no test for similarity. It's just one condition. You can say we are done with the four tests. Let's quickly look at this uh, worked example. Like it's not. I did not add the solution. We will talk about it on our own, just so we can practice questions as well quickly. Okay. Which of the triangles below are congruent? Two A B C. Acha A B C is your first triangle, your reference triangle. A B C is the first one. 
and you need to see ke kaun sa se congruent okay let's have a look at the other one d e f okay so what i can see is that i have four here i have four here i have 3.6 i have 3.6 i have five here i have five here so the two triangles are congruent a b c is congruent to either you can write it down this way is congruent to or you can write it down with these three lines is congruent to d e f why because of side 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 okay the three uh, the two triangles are basically passing the first test that was side 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 all the three sides are same this is why we know that both the triangles are congruent yes any difficulties with this please tell me quickly no difficulties very good what about i j h i j h uh, i g h sorry i g h or yeah, h i g Hmm. Yes. It is congruent because uh, uh, because of uh, angle side angle. Okay, excellent. And what about the other students? What do you guys think? Is it congruent? Yes, yes ma'am. It is congruent. Very good. A B C is congruent to H I G or whatever way you want to write it down. That's fine. Why? Because of yes angle. साइड एंगल ओके एंड हमने इसको याद ऐसे किया एंगल साइड एंगल बट लेट्स जस्ट राइट इट डाउन एज एंगल एंगल साइड बिकॉज दिस इज हाउ वी हैव सीन दिस एज अ प्रॉपर्टी ठीक है एंड व्हाट अबाउट द लास्ट वन इट इज बिकॉज साइड साइड एंगल ओके हाउ हाउ मेनी गाइस थिंक दैट हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू थिंक दैट दिस फोर्थ ट्रायंगल इज कॉन्ग्रुएंट Ma'am, it's not congruent. Ma'am, it's not congruent because the two sides are not. Uh, the angle is not joining the two sides. Yes, very good. I'll tell you. Okay, now, uh, Moise and Taha. Yes, it could be. It could be, and it looks like you are right. It looks like, and it could be that the two triangles are congruent. But this does not pass any test. Side side angle. We did not uh, see this test. Okay. Side side angle was basically this test for right angle triangles, and this was for these triangles only, triangles having ninety degrees. Other than this, we have studied angle angle side, and we have studied side angle side. Okay, so the angle must be this one. If let's say if I had this angle. and this angle then in that case i would have said that yes the two triangles are congruent but this way how do we write it down that we do not have sufficient information to prove that jkl is congruent to abc or not okay so only the second and third triangles are congruent because we have some tests that we have used and we were able to prove that is it okay now Yes. Okay. Understood. Okay. Yes. Very good. Okay. One second. Oh, so many students have left for some reason. Let me check. Their internet is not working. Okay. Acha. Now, what is similarity? Similar shapes have the same shape, but may be different sizes. Okay. The two rectangles shown below are similar. They have the same shape, but one is smaller than the other one. Now we can see that the two triangles look similar. Similar is self-explanatory. The two triangles, the two rectangles are similar, but they are not congruent. Why? Because their dimensions are different. But there is one thing that you need to remember, and that is ratio of corresponding sides. Okay, so this side right here. is basically corresponding to this side and this side right here is basically corresponding to this side so the idea is that if i if you, you can take it any way i can do it smaller divide by bigger you can do it bigger divide by smaller that does not matter it's 3 on the smaller triangle it's 9 on the bigger triangle and what is the ratio 
it's one by three. If two triangles are similar, all these ratios are going to be same. For example, if I look at this two centimeters and six centimeters, so now when I follow the same ratio, small divide by big, two divide by six, I'm again getting one by three. So for similarity, there's just one condition that all the ratios are going to be same. And how do we make these ratios? You can pick, take the bigger diagram, you can take the smaller diagram, just start looking at the corresponding sides and find their ratio. And these ratios must be same. And if you are doing smaller divide by bigger for the first ratio, you will certainly do smaller divide by bigger for the second ratio. And you could have done bigger divide by smaller as well. That is equally correct. Okay. So similar makes just this that the two shapes should look same and their sizes can be different. That does not matter. Yes, any confusions with this? No, ma'am. No, okay. Ma uh, I agree that this was the only thing for similar, but you would understand this once we talk about questions, okay? Acha. Uske baad pe we have, one second, uh, let me read this. We will not talk about this area stuff over here. Acha, okay. Okay, let's talk about this past paper question, okay? And then, one second. This is also important, okay? Achha. If the two triangles are, uh, if the two shapes or if the two triangles are similar, what is the first thing? The first thing is that the ratios are going to be same. Let me admit Abdullah. The first thing is that the, look at this, these triangles are not similar. And why are they not similar? The sides, lengths of the triangles are not in the same ratio. And so the triangles are not similar. So for similarity, we have two things. Number one, the side ratio. And number two, for two triangles to be similar, they must have the, the same inter... Yes, the shape is obviously shape because... Yes, shape is there, but we need to talk about some mathematical stuff, okay? So that says the same internal angles. The two triangles are not congruent. That is obvious. This triangle is not congruent to this one. I can see that. But even if you are not able to understand it through the ratio thing. What you can see is, this is 100, this is 100. This is 50, this is 50. This is 30, this is 30. So, either the three angles must be same. The three angles, 100, 100, 30, 30, 50, 50. Or the ratio thing should be same. You can just check both of these or one of these two. And if it is there, you can say that the two triangles are similar. Any confusions with this? No, ma'am. Okay. Let's use this no, thing to understand it even better. Okay. This is basically a past paper question and it says ACD and BCE are straight lines. Okay. Yes, we can see that. AB is parallel to ED. We can also see that because of the two arrows. Prove that the triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEC. Give a reason for each statement that you make. Okay. You need to prove that the two triangles ABC and CDE are similar. We have two conditions for similarity. Number one, either you can play with the side ratios. We do not have any measurements, any dimensions. So I cannot play with the side ratios. The other condition was angles if you are somehow able to identify angles or even this that this angle would be equal to this one this would be equal to that one if you somehow figure out that uh, the three angles are same in both the triangles then the two triangles are going to be similar now i know that this angle is equal to this angle why now you need to give reason okay now it is important why is it why is it opposite like that? Angles. Yes, vertically opposite, opposite angles. Very angles good. Are. Excellent. Okay, you're right. So, number one, E, C, D is equal to A, C, D. 
This is how we write it down. Okay. ECD means that angle C and ACB means that angle C on the other end. Okay. They are same. Why? Because they are vertically opposite angles. And here names are important. Okay. Achha. Yes, the other one. This angle is same as this angle or some other angle? Two parallel uh, lines. It's, it's one with A. Very yes, good. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Very good, both of you. Two parallel lines are being cut by a transverse. Alternate interior angles. Yes, that is right. Excellent. Alternate interior angles or even alternate angles is also enough. That is good. Okay. So this angle is same as this angle because you can say that the two angles are alternate. Okay. Or even alternate interior angles is also fine. So these two angles are same. So how do we write it down? B, A, C. Just look at this notation. And then C, D, E. Okay. They are same because they are alternate angles. And what about the last one? This is same as this. No, by... that's also alternate. Very good. Uh, again, the same reason because the two angles are alternate or even the fact that since uh, sum of angles in case of a triangle is 180, so when you will add pink and blue, you will just do pink plus blue uh, and you'll just take that out from it 180. So whatever you would get would be the remaining angles. So the two angles were same in both the triangles. Third would automatically be same because of the same logic. Okay. Or let's keep things simple. Just use the same idea that again, E and B are alternate angles. Okay. So we can again write it down in the same. I'm not writing it down because I want to talk about this question. Okay. Acha. It says AB is 6 centimeters and ED is 2 centimeters. Okay, AB is 6 centimeters and ED is 2 centimeters. The, uh, sorry, ED. Yeah. The area of ABC is 45 centimeters squared. Calculate the area of the triangle DEC. Achha. The area of this triangle is 45 centimeters squared and you need to calculate the area of this triangle. Okay. Now I'll tell you. Some students would think that we don't know how to calculate the area of a triangle that is not right angle. You are not supposed to use that. Just relax. Okay. Let me talk about it over here. We have already discussed ratios and proportions. Okay. So if I do big triangle divided by small triangle and this is going to be for length. You guys know better than me that for length the ratio is different, for area the ratio was different and for volume the ratio was different. We have discussed this already, okay? So big triangle's length and small triangle's length. Let's just find out the ratio. So it's AB and the side that is corresponding to AB on the small triangle is ED. And what are the two dimensions? It's 6 divided by 2. So this is going to give me 3. Okay. So big. Ma'am, your voice is cutting off. Can you hear me now? Yes. Ma'am, any... your voice is cutting uh, can off. Can anyone hear me? Ma'am, we can't hear you. Yes, can you guys hear me now? Yes, am I audible? Yes. yes okay, okay, I'm sorry. So what was the thing? The two triangles were similar. We have two dimensions. We have area of one triangle. You need to find the area of the other one. When two triangles are similar, their ratios are same. Okay. Subse pehle, I have figured out the length ratio. The length ratio is three ratio one. For area, I need to have the area ratio. How do I find the area ratio? Tell me quickly. You guys know that we have already discussed this in, in the past. Yes. For area, area of bigger triangle divided by area of the smaller triangle, what do we do? If it's 3 ratio 1, 
for lens i am supposed to square the both sides okay so this time around i would be squaring uh, both the sides both the numerator and denominator and this is going to give me 9 by 1 this is how it was and this is how we have discussed this in the ratio chapter okay when two lengths are same and when we are able to make the ratio that is fine but you cannot use the length ratio to find out the area you need to have the area ratio first okay now i have nine ratio one so what i can do is big area divide by small area what is big area? Big area turned out to be 9 Eight. ratio 1. Area, area, okay, area. And yes. the area of the bigger triangle is 45, actually. And for the smaller triangle, I need to find, okay. So, I am going to cross multiply at this point. And when I will cross multiply, I would get 9x equals 45. So, x is equal to 45 divided by 9. That's 5 centimeters squared. Very, very good. 5 centimeters squared. Excellent. Okay. So, 5 centimeters squared. Now, one last thing. Please pay attention. What were we able to figure out? We were able to see that the lengths of the smaller triangle are basically 3 times less than the bigger triangle. But... The next thing was area. Area would be nine times less, okay? Because area, okay, units kya hota hai? Centimeter squared. And length is just centimeter. So, always remember, if you have the ratio of length, you cannot find the area because you need to have the correct ratio. How do we find the correct ratio? We find the correct ratio by squaring numerator and denominator and then we do it, okay? Yes, is it okay? Yes, yes, I understand. Okay, uh, Bipesh, uh, just send this entire thing to me on uh, WhatsApp just so I can answer your question, okay? Yes, uh, and your thing is right. That is correct. I'll answer this question on WhatsApp directly. Don't worry about it, okay? This is something that we have already discussed. So, it is uh, for basically he's saying that the, let me stop the recording.